pleasant good night to each and every one. And I greet you in the wonderful, powerful, and precious name of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is truly a joy and a privilege to be with you again on this blessed Tuesday night as we share in the word of the Lord and as we worship Almighty God together. The Bible tells us that we ought to worship the Lord, make a joyful noise unto Him, and come before Him with singing and dancing, with rejoicing. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And so we want to do just that tonight. But before we do so, I want to acknowledge the Lord, for the Bible says in all our ways, we must acknowledge God and He will direct our path. Our Heavenly Father, eternal and righteous God, we come before you in no other name but the name of our Savior and Lord. And we are truly thankful to you, O God, for your bountiful blessings, and Lord, for all that you have done and all that you will continue to do. Father, I praise you tonight and I thank you, O God, for your goodness and your mercy. And Lord, I pray that as we study your word, you will enlighten us. As we worship, O God, may our worship ascend unto you as a sweet fragrance. I pray, Father, that you will help us, O God, that we will grasp your word and we will hold on to your word. I pray, Father, that you will help us, O God, that, Lord, your word will be embedded in our heart and in our spirit. Lord, that we will receive tonight from your word. We will receive fresh anointing. Lord, we will receive, O oh God, wisdom and revelation knowledge. O oh Father, I do ask in Jesus' mighty name that you help us, O oh God, so that at the end of tonight's teaching, we will be better than we was before. We give glory and honor and thanks unto you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, tonight we want to welcome the worshipers as they come to lead us in a time of celebration, in a time of rejoicing, as we worship Almighty God. Amen. Praise God. Lord, we lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. We lift your name. We live from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. And we worship him this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We bless your holy name, Father. We worship you. My God, we lift your name on high. Oh, we bless your name. We lift your name on high, Jesus. 
every part of me. You're beautiful to me. You're beautiful to me. You'll be my song for all eternity. You're overtaking. Hallelujah. 
it's only through the cross you have overtaken me only by the blood one more time it's only by the blood it's only through the cross you have overtaken me hallelujah God, you're taking over, call of me, I'm letting go so you can come and have your way in me. I'm leaving, I'm leaving, all behind for Jesus, you save my life now and every day, I worship you, my King. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. All right. So we want to get into the teaching tonight. Um, but before we do so, I want to ask you to invite somebody. Um, text them, send them the link. Um, do whatever you have to do so that um, they too can be a part of this teaching. Amen. Hallelujah. So tonight we want to go to the scripture. We want to look at. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11 and 12. Jesus said, I baptize you with water for repentance. I'm sorry, I, I, it's John the Baptist, I believe, was speaking. Him. He said, I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me will come one who is more powerful than I whose sandal I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. So tonight I want to talk about the fire of God. I want to focus on what the fire means. So John the Baptist began by saying that I am baptizing you with water unto repentance. But one will come after me who will baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. John was saying that I am doing this much, but there is something more than what I am able to do. I can't baptize with fire. I cannot give you the Holy Ghost. But there is one who is coming after me, and he is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. And uh, so we need to pay attention to that because fire is important. In the scripture, fire speaks of God and it speaks of God's judgment at times. And so I hope we will get into that. But Hebrews chapter 12 and verse um, 29, it tells us that our God is a consuming fire. So here in Hebrews, it speaks of God as a consuming fire. Now, let me just pause here for a minute. Right. Many people see God as a loving God. They see God as a merciful and gracious God. And I believe it is this kind of thinking that leads people to live a double standard life so that they are religious on one hand but then they live like the world on the other hand and so they live a double standard life they go to church or do religious work or whatever it is they pray read the scriptures and yet they partake, partake and participate in each and every other thing that they can. And there is no distinction because they believe that God is a merciful God. 
and and God will not punish them or God will not send them to hell and this is the kind of thinking that leads to that kind of life and behavior but while I agree that God is a loving and a merciful God because the scripture tells us that the scripture also tells us that God is a consuming fire here in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 29 it tells us that God is a consuming fire and the scripture also tells us that while God is a loving and merciful God, that God is a just God. I believe it is the Exodus 3, 4 and verse 7 that says that God will by no means clear the guilty. In other words, God will not just say, well, oh, okay, don't worry, I forgive you of your sins, you know. No, we must understand that sin must be dealt with, had to be dealt with. And so, while God is merciful and loving, he is also a consuming fire. And God will take action when necessary and when, uh, when um, people play the fool and judgment come, you know, God will not hold back on judgment. If we look through the scriptures, we will read throughout the Old Testament that God uh, punished people for uh, being wicked. God punished people for not living the life that they ought to live. When people play the fool with God, they receive the judgment and the punishment due to them. So we cannot think that God is a, a God that, you know, um, just, you know, is so loving and kind and, you know, he will not punish your sin. He will, you know, feel sorry and say, well, okay, I'm merciful. In spite of all your sin, enter into heaven. No, that's not the case. Read the Bible and you will, you will realize there were Jesus in teaching and he said that many people in that day many people in that day will come and they will say Lord Lord haven't we done this and haven't we done that we did this we did the other and he will say to, to them depart from me I don't know you I never knew you you workers of iniquity so when people think that God is merciful and because he is merciful he will not send them to hell uh, as a matter of fact, you know, people will, will tell you that literally to your face. They will say, well, um, God will not send anybody to hell. Okay, yeah, I, I understand that. And, and, and I agree that God will not send anybody to hell. But the truth of the matter is that people will send themselves to hell, not God. If anybody end up in hell, it is not God's fault anybody end up in hell it is because uh, uh, they ignore God they, they they did not accept God's grace and favor they rebel against God and the consequences of rebellion against God is hell if you you know my my, my parents had a saying if you can't hear you will feel and so if you fail to listen then you have to face the consequences and that's just a reality for us so we cannot think that you know god is a such a loving god that you know he will not deal with sin. he will swiftly deal with sin he will so the bible tells us that god is a consuming fire Fire often refers to the presence of God. I hope you can see what's on the screen. But fire often refers to the presence of God. We saw in Exodus chapter 3 verse 1, 1 to 3, it says, Now Moses was tending the flock of, his, of Jethro, his father-in-law, in the priest of Midian, and he led the flock, to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mount of God, mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a burning bush. Moses saw that and saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange thing, this strange sight why the bush does not burn up see 
So here God appeared unto Moses. And he appeared unto Moses in fire. Now, in this scenario, the fire did not represent the power of God per se, but it represented the presence of Almighty God. It was a fire, but it was not furious. It was a fire, but the bush was not burned. Now, it, it was the fury of God, the bush would have been burnt. But if we read on, we would read where God said to Moses, he said to take off your shoe for the place where you're standing is holy ground. What made the place holy was the very presence of Almighty God. I'm sure I mean, Moses was treading that place all the time. Moses must have been there before. But suddenly, the place became holy. And what made the place holy was the presence of God. Now let me just pause here again to talk about something which is important. Many people believe that the presence of God has to do with material things. The outfit we have on. The place we go. So that, you know, in order to, to, to feel the presence of God or meet God, we must go to church. I am all for going to church because we learn, we grow, we develop in church. But let me tell you, that's not why we are going to, going to church. We go to church, uh, you know, because we want to be a part of what, what God is doing. And when people say, well, I can worship God at home, yes, I will not deny that. You see, but, but we are talking about the presence of Almighty God. So the church does not contain the presence of God. We contain the presence of God. And therefore, when the Bible tells us that we ought to be holy, it is because the presence of God is in our lives. And we are not living a life, you know, a crazy life, a life, a don't care life, you know, things like that. No, we are living a life uh, with the presence of God in our lives. Jesus says, I will go. And when I go, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit with you and he's going to be with you and he's going to be in you. He's going to dwell in you and he's going to take from you and he's going to show it on to you. So it speaks of the very presence of God. And we must understand that. It is not about wearing a long robe. Sometimes we feel it's a long robe. Now, as a pastor, I, I wear a jacket and tie and, you know, stuff like that. And, and, and I don't do that because I want to do that. I, I think that comes with the territory. But, but honestly, if I could be as simple as I am, hey, I'll do that. So I do not put on a tie or a, 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 um, a suit to invoke the presence of God. Let me tell you, I am no more holy if I put on a suit than if I don't have one. That doesn't make me holy. That doesn't dictate. Um, say that I have the presence of God when I put this on. And so many be people, they put on clothes, they put on chain, they, you know, wear certain things because they want to feel close to God. Listen, if you can't feel close to God ordinary, then you can't feel close to God. God is not interested in clothing. Jesus addressed some religious people and he said to them he called them whited sepulchers because he says outwardly you look white and nice but inside inwardly you are full of dead men bones these were religious people these were people who dressed up with their nice garb and their chain and their 
whatever they had, the, the beads or whatever it is. And Jesus said to them, he said, look at you, you're looking nice outside, but inside is dead men bone, meaning while they dress up on the outside, inside is hate and malice and envy and jealousy and pride and all kind of things that will defile them. So we ought not to fool ourselves to think that, you know, um, because we dress a certain way, we have the presence of God or because we put on a certain thing, you know, the presence of God is within us. Let me tell you, when you sleep, sleeping at night and you put on your pajamas, God is with you. The presence of God is with you in your pajamas. Or you put on your night gown. The presence of God is with you. And so, you know, we, we like to think that it is the things, the material things that invokes the presence of God. It's not that. The presence of God is with you. When you go to sleep at night, when you wake up in the morning, when you go to the washroom, when you go on your job, you know, whatever you're doing, when you, you, you're in the kitchen, where, wherever you go, the presence of God is with you. And you need to understand that. And don't think that you could do certain things to invoke the presence of God. Often I hear in, 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 in churches, you know, and I hear when people pray, and they say, Lord, we invite your presence. If, if you have to invite the presence of God, that is saying that you don't have the presence of God. And, and, and you know, people probably get ticked off with me when I, I talk certain things, you know, because I, I like to ruffle the feathers a little bit. I always say, whenever you're doing something, know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Don't just do it because. Because I think, I think that we adapt a lot of things in the church because we have seen it done. Because we have heard people um, said it and done it. And so, you know, we, we, we take that with, without even thinking as to what we are doing. So when you say, Lord, I invite your presence. I would prefer say, Lord, I welcome your presence. Or, Lord, I thank you for your presence in our midst. You see, because the Bible already says that where the twos and the trees are gathered, there I am in the midst of them. And God says, I will be with you. You don't have to invite me. I am there with you. So we have to be very careful the kind of prayer we pray, what we pray, and how that will result in how we live let's pay attention to that so the, the the fire in the burning bush represented the presence of almighty god exodus chapter, chapter 13 and verse 22 20, 20 to 22 it says after leaving Sukkot, they camped at Etham on the edge of the desert. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night, a pillar of fire to give them light, so they could travel by day or night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. In other words, as they journeyed in the desert, the Bible said that God provided a pillar of cloud by day and a fire by night. 
The fire represented the presence of Almighty God. So that when they saw the cloud, they knew that God was there with them. When they saw the fire, they knew that God was there with them. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 17. It says, Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it in fire. So, these scriptures are speaking of the presence of Almighty God. But you can't, you can't see God. So, God manifests himself in fire. Gentle. But when they saw fire, they knew that God was with them. They knew that God was right there. And so, when we think of fire, that when John said, there's somebody coming after me who's going to baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost, he was speaking of the presence and power of God. Fire then represents, represents the presence, but it also represents the power of Almighty God. We need to understand, and you know, while I'm dealing with the presence of God, next week I'll, I'll go a little bit further. But we are dealing with the presence of Almighty God. Fire speaks of the presence of Almighty God. When you are baptized with the Holy Ghost, well, let me back up a little bit. When you accept Jesus Christ in your life, the Bible says that the Holy Ghost takes up residence in your life. The Holy Ghost comes and, and he, he resides within us. We may not see him. We may not feel him. But he resides in us. And therefore we can be confident that when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our life, that the very presence of God is with us. Therefore, we ought not to be afraid. We ought not to be dismayed. We ought not to, you know, worry because we have the very presence of God in our lives. The Holy Ghost in our lives will guide us will lead us and many a times we look for big exciting things to happen but the holy spirit speaks to us and many a time we do not listen and we go our own way and do our own thing and then realize we should have listened to the holy ghost many times the holy ghost speak to us and we say well boy something telling me it's not something it's the holy ghost the very presence of God in our lives. And the presence of God is going to lead us. The presence of God is going to guide us. We ought not to be afraid or be ashamed or, you know, to think, well, hey, I had to go up in the mountain to meet God. I have to go in by this lake. I had to go, in, you know. No. We have God in us. And Jesus says that he's going to speak to us. He's going to teach us. And he's going to lead us into all truths. So beloved, I want you to, to remember that fire in the Bible represents at times the presence of Almighty God. 
So if you experience a fire in your life, it might well be the presence of God. God might call you out of some burning, burning um, bush or something like he did Moses. You see? But do not be afraid. Know that God is in you, he's with you, and he's going to lead and guide you. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen? I want to stop here tonight, and uh, we'll pick it up next week. And, um, you know, we will talk a little more about um, God, um, the, the presence or the power of, of Almighty God. Heavenly Father and eternal and righteous God, we do give thanks and we give praise to you for your bountiful blessings and for all that you have done. We are truly grateful to you, O oh God, for everything. And I pray that you will give, the, give us wisdom and understanding. I pray that you will help us to grow and develop. I pray that you will help us, O oh God, to receive uh, of your mighty hand. Lord, I pray that you will help us, O oh God, to be sensitive uh, of your presence because your fire represents your presence in many cases. And so I pray that you will help us not to be afraid of you, but Lord, to know that your presence is with us. As your words say, you will go before us and you will be with us. You will never leave us nor forsake us, but you will be with us on to the end of the age. Lord, I ask that you will have your way in our lives. Forgive us for uh, our trespasses. Forgive us for our shortcomings. Lord, our failures. Forgive us, O Father. And I pray that you will help us to be the people you want us to be. I ask that you will touch your people, those who are viewing online. Lord, I ask that you will touch them and heal them. Lord, I pray that you will deliver and set them free. Father, in the name of Jesus, for it is not by might and our power or ability, but it is by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you will guide and bless your people. Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. And amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I trust that you have been blessed by this word. You know, receive this word and always seek for the presence of Almighty God in your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, remember, tomorrow night is prayer meeting and Bible study. Please join us and be a part of what's happening. And Friday night we have a family service. Please join us and take part in what's going on. Amen. Praise God. May God bless you. Um, you know, I, 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 I want to, to say that, you know, encourage somebody. Share this message with them so that they too will be encouraged. Amen. Praise God. This is Pastor Ralph from Lucian of the House of Praise New Testament Church of God. Located in La Fortune Laramine saying to you, with Jesus, the sky is the limit. Don't let anybody hinder you from reaching your potential in Jesus Christ. Because God can do great things with you. And uh, as you humble yourself and submit, he will show you great and mighty things that you do not know of. Amen. Praise the Lord. So God bless you. Until next week, have a great week and a great weekend. God bless you.